welcome everyone we have with us the local superstar david navara david welcome to the studio thank you for joining us uh, thank you for inviting me here welcome everybody and david you played a very exciting game today uh, yes uh, it was a very exciting game and there was also quite some preparation on both sides although i was uh, preparing this line particularly for today whereas parham has been playing it for a long time yes. and uh, I d maybe he had not expected it to appear now so can we go through the game uh, there are a few moments where we thought uh, you took some great decisions and we want your thoughts on them so, yes uh, yes uh, so we play the line which parham plays regularly in classical chess blades rapid everything i'm not sure about my move order because i'm not sure if i prepared queen d2 against bishop b7 or against bishop e7 but probably it's not such a big difference the queen goes to f4 but uh, in some lines i wanted to keep my queen on d2 so so far i played rook d1 which is a useful move protecting my central pawn and rook b8 was a sur sort of surprise because I looked at some other lines and uh, what I played looks reasonable. Uh, I played knight c3 because the knight can be exposed on b5 mm -hmm. and because queen g4 allows f5 when uh, my queen could be misplaced uh, or exposed at least because of rook g6 and uh, g2 might be weak in some lines. Okay. So I played knight c3 knight b4 now we have transposed to my preparation again ah, you had rook b8 in your preparation i'm yeah? not 100 percent sure if it was really rook b8 but i think that most likely it was this position but we reached with a different move order or rather with different move orders because uh, there were various ways how to reach this and uh, Actually, Parham played, uh, had played some games, and I even believe that we have been following a game against Dmitry Andreykin from chess.com. I think it was titled Tuesday, but I might be wrong. Maybe some other event. And basically, my main line of preparation was h6, when uh, knight f3 makes sense because white has provoked, provoked some weakening, but uh, I think it probably doesn't promise so much against uh, good reaction. And knight ge4 seems to be critical. Now f5 is the move white takes. And uh, there is a lot of theory in this position. Uh, in particular after knight c5 black m should play knight c2 when the point is that uh, here he has bishop c8 mm. and uh, it's around equal because black takes white takes black takes on d4 and uh, black can even sacrifice or maybe should very much sacrifice the queen here like this uh, Actually, maybe white needs to be careful in yeah. such positions like this because it's a, it's a position where black just needs to protect everything and white's queen is not so great at protecting weaknesses because it's too valuable a piece to be exchanged. <laughs> so this was your prep? It was my preparation, yes. Wow. But uh, okay, uh, uh, mostly I have uh, some nice preparation, but mostly it doesn't appear on the board. So <laughs> here uh, the problem is that white cannot take, should not take probably on d8 because too many pieces are hanging, like a1 rook, d8 knight. So it probably loses an exchange. And mm -hmm. uh, also there were uh, other lines, but uh, Parham played queen e8, which I believe he had played against Dmitry Andreykin. Did you consider instead of queen h5, queen h3? I mm. considered it. Actually, I'm not even sure if uh, queen h5 was the move which I had prepared because uh, somehow I had not expected Parham to repeating this uh, because uh, I believed it to be inaccurate. Mm. Parham believed to be in his preparation and believed the black position to be fine. I'm not sure if uh, he is confusing it with something or maybe his preparation is so deep that it is indeed fine if uh, black plays some very accurate moves. I considered queen h3 but I was not really remembering much and uh, somehow playing queen h5 looked logical to me because 
exchanging queens against Parham makes sense because he is a great tactician and here white has a risk-free slight advantage True. f5 True. i was not even sure whether i would have taken on g7 yes, uh, here or not line. yes rook there f5. rook f5 perhaps f4, f4 h6 rook g4 g4 rook f5 bishop e7 knight d3 may maybe some d4 computer doesn't like it it's biased against me i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> okay this uh, was quite risky but i saw that at least i could uh, play similarly to the game uh, maybe here it's a bit less attractive because black's rook is on a b8 and i remember that i needed to put my bishop on g3 um, i was not r really sure how to put my bishop uh, on g3 here in the game which is so so you considered bishop f4 because you had prepped somewhere that bishop should be on g3 uh, i saw bishop f4 in dmitry andreykin's game in a similar position not necessarily exactly in this one and i remember that bishop g3 then is a good move uh, mm. in uh, definitely not against rook e7 but it was in some other line perhaps uh, that after rook g8 i should play perhaps bishop g3 rather than g3 that was what i remembered but and bishop h4 or bishop h6 uh going bishop, through your mind or bishop h6 uh, i didn't i did not like this so much because here mm -hmm. my bishop looked a bit exposed and i was not so sure black might have knight d5 sometimes maybe even some other ideas i think rook d8 maybe and knight c2 or rook a c1 and some ideas based on knight d3 perhaps or knight c6 i'm not so sure but uh, knight bishop h4 will was a relevant option for me but somehow i did not want to leave the f4 square unattended because black's knight would be very happy to enter it and uh, somehow bishop f4 looked sort of logical to me i am attacking a pawn uh, i will go to g3 if needed Makes and uh, it looked pleasant to me so now i probably need to move further yes bishop g3 is solid uh, i wanted to play b3 at some point but knight d5 was a bit of problem so this makes sense and here i saw some ideas again i needed to pair in rook knight c2 or did not exactly need to parry it but somehow it was pleasant to play yeah, a rook useful c1. move yes after rook d7 then uh, f6 we were is a thinking bit about rook d7 yes how would you defend the d4 pawn i saw some ideas based on the rightly timed uh, bishop h4 and some a3 stuff and uh, knight e4 at some lines when black's knight uh, retreats to c6 or d5 but uh, i would need some time to recall what was i uh, calculating here actually even b3 is an idea sometimes but somehow i'm not really sure if i am able to recall it right now it was a tough game yes i saw no. some ideas based on this so it also explains king g7 and here again i saw plenty of ideas like b3 a3 f3 and uh, somehow knight b5 looked good to me uh, which uh, is probably true i don't think i'm not sure if it's the best move but it uh, looks reasonable of course i miscalculated somewhere as usually because here i missed uh, originally that uh, i mean originally my idea was to play uh, rook a1 and mm. uh, then take on a7 but somehow this c6 is really c6, unpleasant yes. so um, i realized this was not the way but uh, i but found c7 was yeah, a nice move. yes i found it pretty quickly and then spent some time calculating because there were so many intermediate moves and even the position with rook and two pawns against two minor pieces was not uh, so obviously i mean it was clearly better for white but uh, still i needed some t to spend some time for example here bishop d6 a4 when i guess rook d7 with coming with tempo mm -hmm. so now i need to go back sorry i don't have uh, i have mouse but uh, i <laughs> don't have uh, arrows so i cannot thank you go back so uh, rook a1 and uh, this end game is uh, really promising for white because uh, the rook can operate on both flanks black very much needs to avoid a bishop swap now uh, so perhaps some king f8 move or something could be useful because after king f7 i can probably exchange the bishops through rook b7 i don't know if i should go to d3 
Okay, maybe it's not so clear, but uh, with the rook on b7, I would have preferred to achieve this with my rook on a7, because then I can exchange and play some uh, rook a8, rook h8 at some point, not immediately. I, will first, I would first improve my position, like playing g3, uh, activating my king, but it's unpleasant for black and uh, it's a play for two results. Black can almost never win this unless I blunder some fork, which could happen in blitz, but uh, it's unlikely in classical chess. So bishop f6 was a good defense. Actually, there was a move e5, but it fails. It probably sort of loses because I can take it. I originally wanted to take on a2, but maybe then bishop e6 was something what I had not really seen. But now this seems to be winning for white because uh, I first win an exchange and then I win the a7 pawn through bishop d3 and bishop b1. Wow. And without the a7 Very pawn nice. it's just lost for black. Fantastic. And sometimes I can even take on b7 but uh, it's the less important pawn of the two. So bishop... Uh, oh, so where are we? Bishop c6 was quite good and uh, Baham was defending very well. I hoped... Uh, Did you feel here that you were uh, close to sort of getting a big edge? Uh, something between uh, small and big. I was not sure, but uh, I found it promising and Parham was also short of uh, time. Uh, so I saw so I could exchange and play b4, bishop d6, bishop c5, but somehow black plays a6, puts his king on g6, and uh, it's hard to imagine how could white make uh, progress. Of course, one can play such a position for 100 moves without any risk, but I'm not sure that I would have been so happy playing uh, for about 100 moves and then making a draw anyway. And uh, what I played uh, looked promising to me, but there was still some defense. I even considered b5, but rejected it on account of knight d2. So bishop d3 looked very promising, but knight d2 was a very good defense, in my opinion, because mm. if black plays f5, he weakens the e5 square, and I can sometimes exchange on c4. Uh, say Sorry, sorry. There was a line where I play f3 and if black or maybe b5 even now I'm not sure if I can if I have time for f3 but uh, the point was that in uh, lines like this I can sometimes uh, make such a transformation and I'm not sure if h5 h4 is an idea maybe black will lose the pawn on h4 or I will play h4 myself but uh, I can sometimes activate my king I can attack black's king and it looks very very hard for black here mm. so knight d2 was did you consider bishop d6 here uh, I considered it but I disliked something and I also miscalculated somewhere I think it's uh, similar to what happened in the yeah, game knight b3 maybe rook a4 a4 was not exactly the square where I would like to go, but uh, maybe it's good, I don't know, but uh, it's not the most natural move, yeah. let's but put it like Because he can't take on d4, right, in that sense? Maybe. I considered something like this. It, okay, here probably white has f3 or f3 something. F3, king, f2. Yes, yeah, so maybe knight c6 is the move, I don't know really. But I considered taking, which was nothing, but here f3, king, f2 is what I tried to achieve later in the game, so maybe... I should have played something similar, I don't know, f3 looked nice to me but I miscalculated in some lines and also I'm not sure about rook a6 because I played it and then I realized that there was no bishop c2 because ah, of knight c6, knight b4. Yes. Uh, also this I found uh, a moment before that, uh, like bishop c5, knight e6 and then I became happy that I had rook d6 but uh, I mean, ah, yes, this is here. Some hope, yeah. Yes, bishop c4 doesn't work in view of uh, bishop e8 when black is in time to protect everything, but instead I can play bishop v5, and black probably needs to give up a pawn somehow, or one of those pawns, I'm not sure, but if a6 or king f8, but uh, rook d7 could be an unpleasant threat. Maybe there is some defense instead of king f8, but it looks hard especially with little time left yeah maybe there is something like i don't know king, king g6 uh, rook d7 rook c8 it doesn't look quite bishop e8 safe. doesn't work for bishop bishop e8 uh, maybe it works there is no rook d7 unfortunately 
and to maybe there is nothing at all May maybe it just works like this okay so okay there is nothing and uh, rook b3 and uh, now i saw m so many interesting ideas but somehow could not make it work this was for example very tricky to face in a time trouble because i play rook d7 here and it's not so simple for example if black doesn't play this uh, what sorry where is it here if black plays rook b7 instead then there is bishop f2 and i believe there is uh, knight c1 and probably black saves the position thanks to some backering wow. motives like this wow. but uh, if black is something else it can be really dangerous because there is bishop h4 and black loses a pawn and perhaps more pawns and it's lost suddenly and if black plays uh, bishop g8 here there is uh, bishop h4 anyway and this looks very dangerous with those pieces clumsily placed although maybe black saves the position somehow i don't know but he is losing a pawn perhaps so it was not i mean it could be dangerous but i spent quite some time on thinking about this and then it just no longer looked so attractive for example h5 can be a move here also other moves but then at least i can take on h7 in some lines maybe not necessarily immediately i need not hurry with it after knight d4 there could even be ideas like bishop c5 bishop f8 check sometimes but basically white might maybe win a pawn in some lines but it will still be a draw so it was not so much so i decided to maintain attention but somehow it did not really work so knight c6 was good i assume knight d4 i still had some ideas but somehow nothing really works here for example this was not really my idea i had a plan to rook b4 Ooh. but okay this is also fine because then after bishop e7 there is rook b6 and black protects everything and i'm upon down which should not really matter here but uh, i'm not playing for a win anymore so uh, here i also considered instead playing a rook b4 and uh, initially it was my plan but somehow it did not look so serious like such a serious win winning attempt because black can play something like bishop f7 bishop g6 or bishop e6 bishop f5 and uh, I, I mean one can keep trying but uh, it uh, did not look like a, a realistic winning attempt so i instead went for some traps because here for example if black plays rook d7 i can play either rook d4 or maybe be even bishop f5 first it's no no rook, rook d4 bishop f5 doesn't really work because this end game could be very unpleasant for black possibly lost and uh, instead uh, there are not so many options for black because at least i play bishop f5 and probably it's nothing but i mean there are some unpleasant ideas and black needs to pay some attention for example i will show some random moves i mean it's not a serious line but for example oh, okay maybe f5 was not exactly the most clever idea here so sorry uh, how was it I, I don't remember okay king f7 just some random moves but i want to show okay maybe with this random move it is actually fine after king e7 there could still be rook h4 and this i looked at something like this uh, of course it's random it's like searching for some random chances but i just wanted to demonstrate that some chances could be found here and there maybe king g3 king h4 is actually more accurate i don't know and now for example like this and white wins a pawn so black still needs to be careful that's the point but it's a draw and uh, baham had to defend it very well and uh, here it was no longer so uh, difficult so king f7 actually when i went for this i still believed that black had to play like uh, uh, either something like rook b2 rook takes g2 and then against rook and bishop with some pawns or without them but uh, or here king c6 which could still be a little bit very little uh, unpleasant but of course it must be a draw perhaps even king d6 is a draw here but okay king f king e5 is just simpler and here i just wanted not wanted not to take the pawn too much later than black would do so but actually h5 was 
no slower when it comes to eating pawns because black cannot play f5 in view of h6 so this would have been much more natural because in the game i need to be careful not to allow f5 f4 i think it was nimtovic against Taj who allowed this in a pawn end game um, yes this is a draw of course black pushes uh, late king g5 f5 but uh, there was an end game between nimtovic and Taj where there was a similar position with pawn on g2 uh, i will probably go a bit back uh, and the game uh, like this uh, okay white has king on e4 somewhere pawn on g2 uh, black has king on i don't know g7 g8 and uh, there was f5 check, uh, f4 with pawn on a5 because white was unable to take it. Ah. So this was winning. And, and then you separate the pawns. Uh, yeah, yes, it's, it happened actually in that game. Yeah. So it's probably everything from my side. Uh, shall I tell a few words to the remaining game or better not? Yes, I would love to. But one question for our viewers here who are sitting. Many of them are also playing the open tournament and also back home. Uh, you calculate so deeply and so many lines. Is there any advice that you would give to players to improve their calculation? So, I mean, so many lines you showed and so deep calculations. Okay, I have talent for this. But of course, when I, when I was young, I was uh, solving a lot of examples. First, it, those were some simple tactics. Uh, then I, uh, in my early 20s, I was solving uh, plenty of studies, but not those studies which are produced by people assisted by computers for uh, for computers uh, to solve it. I'm exaggerating, of course, but studies which were made uh, often without computers help and uh, all this for human solvers uh, which um, can people can solve if they have right ideas good calculation and uh, like this and uh, which studies which are also nice or examples from games and uh, it helps when one trains uh, himself or herself in such a way okay since then i have become much lazier in this respect uh, and also there is too much theory to uh, uh, okay which uh, one should follow or it's expected to follow so it's uh, it's uh, perhaps the main thing but uh, i mean when i'm in a good shape like today i can calculate a lot uh, deeply and of course when the position is uh, complicated i inevitably make mistakes but it's important not to make too big mistakes and not in the most important lines at least uh, and uh, there are many advices uh, how to calculate actually i even had a lecture uh, on this for some youngsters from india and other countries during the pandemic and uh, it contained some nice uh, examples also so it was also a sort of training for me although solving is better than <laughs> teaching <laughs> other people how to solve or calculating is better than teaching others how to calculate uh, when one wants to calculate well, but it can also help sometimes. Wonderful. Thank you for those insights. Uh, and I wanted to get your thoughts on this one game that is going on right now between Vincent and Richard. Uh, do you feel like White has any realistic chances of winning this? Uh, First of all, it's very unpleasant to play such a position with black because there is one weakness on b6. Yeah. Other weakness in a broader sense is that white has a passed pawn and black needs to pay attention to this. And uh, white can play almost without risk, whereas black uh, might sometimes get some counterplay, but somehow his task is harder, more difficult. I see the evaluation bar here mm. so probably it's fine for black but uh, i would have been uh, scared if playing this over the board but uh, perhaps it helps that white's bishop cannot uh, penetrate into black's position and that black is able to protect uh, b6 and to, that white's yeah. king journey to a4 and b5 would take too much time and black could probably take on g h5 and uh, start some counterplay maybe against f2 in the meantime so Yes, I mean, the king was on a4, it went to b, like, this was the position where black mm -hmm. kept his king, and then it tried to go the other side, where the king went here. So, if you tried with white, what plan would you go for, or there is nothing 
specifically that white can do because uh, there are no pawn breaks right you know you can always uh, move here and there and the black uh, needs to pay attention all the time because you as i mean as we did play it against me because uh, sometimes it's just uh, moving here and there to gain time or uh, to maintain the pressure sometimes it is uh, connected with some real threats or traps and the, the defender needs to pay attention and then it costs some energy and one might uh, run low on time and uh, it's uh, not so easy uh, i mean in practice it can be a promising uh, way how to play such positions but uh, okay i don't know it's uh, it will probably be a draw because Vincent seems to be knowing very well how to defend this position. Sure. And also the bishop on d8 is not a very active piece, but mm -hmm. uh, it defends both uh, pawns which could potentially be uh, weak, namely b6 and f6. And black really wants to keep these two pawns alive because after losing any of them, he would have two weak pawns immediately. So. The bishop on d8 is a very good defender, although it's a passive piece. Fantastic. So do you have and any questions? Yes. Yes. No, yesterday we uh, witnessed a beautiful game which you played uh, with Norderbeg. I mean, of course, there were chances towards the end. I think uh, there was this nice tactic by Norderbeg, but otherwise you were winning in that position. Uh, okay, uh, I had been losing before, but yes. basically all the mistakes were sort of understandable except for my last one it was a bit silly because i still had time and if i had spent uh, a minute more <laughs> i could have avoided this and uh, but i mean uh, it was a difficult game no back surprised me in the opening i reacted poorly i got into big problems but then started uh, searching for some practical chances and it was very difficult position uh, position where probably everybody would make mistakes yes. okay maybe sometimes a player is uh, lucky and in good form and can play everything uh, correctly but it's uh, very unlikely even for the strongest players so the mistakes uh, were mostly uh, like understandable my last mistake was quite silly because i just uh, saw that uh, if I took on C, uh, on f7, queen e8 would not work because of uh, rook f8, and that uh, it was nice. I even I think that rook d6 even crossed my mind, but I thought to myself, okay, I will play rook df8, or did, did I want to play rook f8? I don't know. Somehow I did not really spend more than one second on it. I didn't believe it, or maybe it was some other move. Somehow, and then I played it, and rook d6 yeah. followed. And I realized yeah, it, it was, was wrong. Very difficult game already, yes. and a lot of creative ideas. Yeah. We, as we know, you're the most creative player over here. And as I told Sagar yesterday, that you, he, he, David always greets with Namaste. So I did learn one more word to greet you. Dobri then. Yeah, Is it correct? Yes, it's two words actually. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, and uh, unfortunately, I don't know anything else in Hindi. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's uh, maybe I could learn something but I mean but, I, but you know like a lot of languages if I'm not wrong how many languages do you know uh, okay it might be around three or four well and around uh, four or five poorly uh, yeah. or less well say because totally but it would be yeah. around eight as far yeah. as I know okay many are <laughs> si similar to each other so it's uh, actually not such a big achievement but I mean I'm trying and uh, well in chess I was uh, very uh, talented and had uh, very good results since my childhood with languages it came uh, more like gradually and also uh, needed more work but also i also have talent for it but uh, uh, needed to work harder and uh, it needed more time mm -hmm. but uh, okay there are but people who are better in this respect so i'm trying i'm good perhaps but uh, still overrated <laughs> <laughs> And how does it feel to play in your hometown? Uh, it's nice because I know many people here. Uh, I feel good here. I'm also staying in the hotel because somehow it's uh, easier for me. I would need to travel like 40 minutes by bus. Uh, and 
Here I have uh, food. The food is delicious in the hotel. Uh, many people whom I know are uh, here, so I can uh, have a dinner together with them to talk to them and like this. Uh, and uh, also, it helps me to focus on the tournament because if I were at home, there would uh, always be uh, plenty of things which I could do, I should do, and I <laughs> had to do. Whereas uh, here in the hotel, it yeah. feels more standard in this respect wonderful thank you for sharing your thoughts here. you are welcome thank you for your attention thank you david and um, all the best